All right, good to see all of you this morning. Welcome to Southside Baptist Church. Maybe turn me down just a hair. All right, very good. I want to wake everyone, wake everyone up. All right, let's fire that song up there, please. Let's all stand as we uh, begin our worship today. song maybe you don't know we've done it before it's entitled he knows my name it's a great old hymn Like 
seated. How's everybody this morning? All right, praise the Lord. Well, if you have a bulletin this morning, you will notice that the bulletin says we want to welcome Clear Creek Baptist Bible College worship team, and I am not their worship team. We got a, yes. Oh, you were going to get blessed today. I, I tell you what, it was, uh, we've heard it before, and especially being there on numbers of occasions of campus as they lead, and, but about two o'clock yesterday afternoon, they're, uh, uh, the main worship person on, on staff there at Clear Creek, Dr. Nix, called me. He said, brother, first words out of his mouth, brother, I'm going to have to apologize to you. So three or four of the folks have a stomach, stomach bug. A couple of them tested positive for COVID. And uh, he said, you are first on our list in the spring. So when the spring semester comes back, we're going to get back on the, on the list and have them to come and be with us. So you're stuck with me this morning and uh, our worship team. So praise the Lord for them. Uh, James Bratcher is, uh, took his dad to church this morning, uh, to his local church, and uh, so we want to continue to lift him up in prayer. If you, got a bull if you have a bulletin, there's a few announcements I want to call your attention to. In the bulletin, there's a little insert. One of those inserts was on the scrolling announcements as you came in. As you all are invited to a wedding shower uh, for Madison Murley and her husband, Brooks, and that will be on Sunday, October 31st. That will be from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock at the Larrabee Mitchell Clubhouse, so everyone in the church is invited to that. Also, uh, Leanne put an announcement in the bulletin. You want to come and share a little bit about that, Miss Leanne? You don't, but go ahead and come on up here. You're, there you go. Take Miss Tracy's microphone, and she will. Uh, want to tell you one thing is that uh, the kids finished today the greatest journey and so next Sunday if the kids can be here we're going to bring them up here for just a minute and they each get a Bible for completing and, and a certificate and, and we're going to do that uh, this coming Wednesday night if some people can stay afterwards uh, and put together boxes they're flat and you put them together and it doesn't take very long Susie and Frank did it last year and it took y'all about what 30 45 minutes with about 10 people yeah so if we don't get them all done this Wednesday night we can do them the next Wednesday night but if we can do that that would be great um, we need one more pre-packing party and we want to do that the Sunday night which is the 7th um, of November at about 5 o'clock and bring finger foods again. We've got a few more items we need to unpackage. Uh, we've got a few more soccer balls we need to deflate. And we need to get things organized because that following Thursday, we're going to actually pack the boxes. And that way we can just leave everything set up and, and have it ready. So next two big... Uh, on Wednesday nights, if you can help put together boxes on the 7th, November the 7th, we're going to get everything prepared for the following Thursday night where we're actually going to pack the boxes. Did I miss any? Okay. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank you so much for doing that. In the foyer out there on that, in our welcome center, uh, we now have produced a phone list. 
and for you, and we have enough, I believe, for one per family, so some of you already picked one of those up, so please pick one of those up uh, on your way out, and I will already apologize. Thank you for those who have helped on that. I will already apologize if we missed a phone number, an address, uh, having a name uh, incorrectly, or maybe we omitted someone. Uh, we apologize for that. We tried the best that we could. We've been working on this for a couple months, and but we want to have this in your hands. That way, if you have a phone number and address that you need to get a hold of someone, you now have that. And if we need to make more copies, we, we can do that as well. Also, I want to let you know that uh, this past Wednesday night, we started our uh, uh, Book of Revelation study on Wednesday night. We're going to do a nine-week study. And we had 45 people here on Wednesday night. Had a great turnout. And uh, so it was a good beginning to that. Next Sunday night, uh, our church is going to be ordaining two new deacons, uh, Bud Taylor and uh, Ricky Turner will be our two candidates that we will be ordaining. That is for the entire church. We want you all to come. That's going to be a, a worship service. And as we uh, have that ordination service and set these two gentlemen aside for ministry within our church, that will take place at 5 o'clock here at the church next Sunday night at 5 o'clock. Uh, so we're looking forward uh, to that. So, all right, am I missing any announcements? Did you mention our annual meeting? Annual meeting, there's our director of missions. Uh, Associational missionary mission strategist. I, Lynn, I, I tell you what, I, DOM just sticks in my head for I'm ingrained in that. So, Liberty Associational Annual Meeting is Tuesday night at Rallis Baptist Church. It uh, begins at 5:30, so we're grateful for that. And uh, let me go ahead and introduce, and then after the special music, our guests will be able to come. Even though Clear Creek's worship team did not come, uh, Clear Creek's main guy did come, Dr. Uh, Donnie Fox, who's president of Clear Creek Baptist Bible College is uh, with us today. Dear friend, we've been friends for over 30 years, and uh, he was gracious enough to go ahead and make the trip and, and uh, to be with us today. You'll be pleased. You'll be blessed by the word that he will share uh, today. And then just this past week, uh, Donnie uh, announced his retirement from Clear Creek Baptist Bible College, effective December of 2022. So after serving for 18 faithful years at Clear Creek, uh, he said that he's going to take some time out to be with his family and his grandkids. So we're grateful for his leadership and uh, we're grateful for that, uh, for his friendship as, as well. All right. Ready to sing again? All right, come on up here, folks. Let's sing it. Let's sing a good old song, I Stand Amazed in the Presence. At the end of this song, if the kids can go over down to Children's Church and Nursery, uh, you are welcome to do that at the end of this song. I Stand Amazed in the Presence. and also to nursery. We've got one more song, song that we have not done here at this church for a long, long time. Very simple. If we can go to the next screen. The doxology. Y'all ready? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him
before uh, Dr. Fox comes to share the word with us uh, this morning, <clears throat> let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to we'll share just a brief song, and, and Dr. Donnie will come. Let's pray together. Father, we come before you this morning with gratefulness in our hearts. Lord, we are excited to be in your house. We thank you for the freedom to come to worship you. We thank you for the freedom that you give us to sing some songs, to lift up the person of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that you are Lord and you are King, you are Master, you are Alpha, you, you are Omega, you are the beginning and the end. And Lord, we come for one reason, and that's to celebrate the work of Christ. We thank you for what you did on Calvary's cross. Now, Lord, I pray as our dear friend comes and breaks the word of, of God to open to us today, that you would just give him that anointing, that unction, and that freedom to preach today. And Lord, help us that we have ears to hear and hearts to listen. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the morning when I rise, and in the morning when I rise, and in the morning when I rise, so give me Jesus. So give me Jesus. And give me Jesus. And you can have all this world, but give me Jesus. And when I am alone, oh, and when I am alone, yes, when I am alone, so give me Jesus, give me Jesus, and give me Jesus. And you can have all this world, but give me Jesus. And when I come to die, oh, and when I come to die, and when I come to die, give me Jesus. So give me Jesus, give me Jesus, and you can have all this world, and you can have all this world, and you can have all this world but give me Jesus <laughs> thanks brother appreciate it well now David doesn't know this but he brought back a lot of memories uh, when I was sitting there with him singing see a lot of people uh don't realize that uh, the first time that I met David and Teresa was ironically at Southside Baptist Church in Middlesboro, Kentucky. And uh, I was serving there, and we uh, brought them on staff there when they were at Clear Creek as worship leaders. So I had heard uh, David and Teresa, I think there's no better uh, musician and singer than Teresa Parika. And uh, David's a close second, maybe, but uh, uh, that brought back some memories uh, for me. Uh, I've enjoyed their friendship, and I'm glad God uh, crossed our paths together 30 years ago. Uh, so that was a blessing to me, David. Thank you for that. It is a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, let me apologize again, you know, there's just nothing you can do about sickness, uh, but, you know, on the safe side, people just stayed home, and you, you did miss a blessing, and hopefully in the spring, David, you can work that out to, 
to have them back because God's doing amazing things through our music and worship program at Clear Creek and Dr. Nick's. And uh, I look forward to them coming uh, and being able to minister to you. So uh, again, my apologies, but we do what we have to do sometimes, okay? So we'll, we've already made the best of it in your worship. Now, if you'll turn with me to the book of Numbers this morning, the book of Numbers, I'm going to be using as a text this morning in chapter 9, verses 15 through 23. Numbers chapter 9, verses 15 through 23. Now, here's, a, here's a, a, a thought that I want you to hold throughout this passage. This is a, always a passage that has intrigued me, um, but it gives us some good lessons about how God leads us in our lives and some of the challenges that we face. You see, I believe that the Bible points us to the fact that God does have a specific purpose and a, and a place and a time for all of his people, okay? There's a, there's a plan for us. There's a, a, a place and a season that we need to uh, bring about that plan. God has a, has, a, has a purpose for us. Now, here's the challenge that I want you to see through this passage. How we get there to that place or purpose or time, how we get there really is the difference between us truly following God instead of just wandering around, okay? That's what I want you to take from this passage. In Numbers chapter 9 here, 15 through 23, I believe I want to challenge you to see this morning that God's Word shows us, listen, church, we don't have to spend our lives just wandering around. We don't, okay? We don't have to do that. Barely getting through, just existing. Now, if you're watching today, if you're sitting here today and you're not a believer, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'll guarantee you I know that hole in your heart that's there because you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You're just existing today. You may not want to admit it, but I know I've been there before. You're just existing today. But when God is in control of our lives, folks, listen, we don't have to spend our life just wandering around. So I want us to look at this passage here this morning and know that God is still in the business of providing His children some direction-giving systems, some GPS systems in our lives. The question is, are we going to truly follow that to get where He wants you and me to be, or are we just going to leave here today again just wandering around? Listen to what the Bible says in Numbers chapter 19 verse 15 and on the day that the tabernacle was reared up the cloud covered the tabernacle namely the tent of testimony and at evening there was upon the tabernacle as it were the appearance of fire until the morning now so it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night now, here we go. Look here, it says, And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after that the children of Israel journeyed. And in the place where the cloud abode, there the children of Israel pitched their tents. And at the commandment of the Lord the children of Israel journeyed, and at the commandment of the Lord they pitched. As long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. And when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle many days... Then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. And so it was when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, according to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents, and according to the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. And so it was when the cloud abode from evening unto the morning, and that the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they journeyed. Whether it was by day or by night that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed. Now look, look at verse 22 here. Or whether it were two days or a month or a year that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, remaining thereon, the children of Israel abode in their tents and journeyed not, but when it was taken up, they journeyed. At the commandment of the Lord, they rested in the tents. At the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Lord at the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses. Now... To some people, 
this could be a, a strange type of passage when we think about God's leadership. And that's what I'm going to challenge you to look at this morning. When you, when you put this in context, think about what was going on here for the children of Israel at the moment. The book of Numbers uh, takes place as the people, God's people, are preparing to leave Mount Sinai and journey to the border of the promised land, okay? Now, as the people had begun their journey, God promised them, you remember in, all the way back in the book of Exodus, as they began their journey, He promised them what? He said, I will provide you leadership. I've got a specific place and a purpose for you, and I'm going to provide you leadership to get there. And oh, by the way, it's going to be through a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. But the challenge to the people was this. All they had to do was follow. That's all they had to do. God said, I'm going to give you my leadership and all you have to do is follow. Now, when you take this passage as it shows us now uh, the, the different uh, goings and stayings that the children of Israel had, I want us to pull this into our life now. And let's think about our life context here this morning. You see, just like the Israelites, you and I, we don't always know what lies ahead, do we? We don't always know that. There there are certainly many uncertainties in our lives. There are many places that you and I have never been. And let's just face it, let's be honest, sometimes we just don't know what to expect. But, praise God today, just like Israel then here in the book of Numbers, we have a cloud to lead us today. And praise God, the Bible says that's the Holy Spirit. You say, well, uh, remember John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17, when Jesus was preparing his disciples for his departure, what did he say to them? He said, I'm going to pray to the Father, and he's going to give you another comforter. And that word another means one just like me. And what did he go on to say? He's the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. And over on down in John chapter 16, he says, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth so you see when it comes to leadership today you and i have that cloud that that holy spirit is god's people that guides us so uh what i want to do is relate that back now as you see how god led his people in this type of leadership i believe that you and i can learn a lot about god's leadership in our lives by looking at how the Israelites, through this cloud, followed God to get to the place where he wanted them to be. And I want to challenge you to see that it could very well today make a difference between you truly following God in your life to get where he wants you to be or just wandering around existing with no real purpose. So let's walk back through this text and let's answer that question. Let's think about that thought. What is it that makes the difference between truly following God or just wandering around with our lives? Well, look back as we look back through this passage. The first thought I want to share with you is this. The difference between truly following or wandering is this. First of all, you and I have to be willing to be led by God. We have to be willing to be led by God. Notice in verse 17 here, I find it interesting. It says, and when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle. Now notice here it says, then after that, the children of Israel journeyed. Now that tells me something here. The passage does not say that the cloud drove them. The passage reminds us that after that, then the children of Israel journeyed. So what that tells me is the cloud didn't drive them. The cloud led them. It led them, okay? The cloud could provide no leadership unless the nation of Israel was willing to be led. And it plainly says that after the cloud picked up and moved, and after that, then the children of Israel journeyed. Listen, church, 
we are not driven by the Holy Spirit. We are led by the Holy Spirit. That's the way you and I need to approach God's leadership. We're led by the Holy Spirit. So when I think about this and I pull this context of God's leadership in the life of Israel here and you pull it into my life, here's, here's, here's the challenge. The foundation for all leadership from God is the willingness on my part and your part to go wherever God wants me to go, to go whenever God wants me to go, and to go however God wants me to go. And it comes from a yielded heart to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. God cannot provide leadership unless we're willing to give ourselves to Him with that yielded heart. And then after the cloud rose and left, then the people journeyed. Now think about this. God's people were not on a steady march for 40 years in the wilderness. Neither were they at a permanent rest. In fact, their journey was a series, was a long series of stops and goes. Stops and goes. But it was always at the command of the Lord, not when they said. Now, I won't ask uh, you to raise your hand or get up and share this, but think about this in your own life. And I've done this as, as God's brought this passage upon my heart. Think about those times in our life when we tried to tell God, this is how it needs to work out, God. I, oh, God, yeah, let me do this first and then... I'll do this. I, I can take you back uh, to times, actually, I was thinking about this, a time when I met David and Teresa when I was working secularly in a job and, and God was dealing with me and in, in doing ministry and, and things like that. And I thought, well, Lord, just, just let me get this straightened out over here first in my job and, and then I'll do this. Well, you know what? The Lord let me do that. I thought that's what I needed to do first and I was the most miserable person I could ever be. Until I finally dropped my head on my desk one day and said, Okay, God, I, I know what I need to do. It, it's your leading. You see, we can all think of times like that when we've tried to tell God, Let me move first, God. Let me do this first, Lord. But listen, the difference between truly following or just wandering around is, are we, first of all, willing to be led by God? Led by God. Not me telling God how it needs to work out, but am I willing to be led by God? Secondly, I want you to see from this text, <laughs> we must be constantly looking for the obvious that God puts around us. Listen, when it comes to God's leadership, we've got to always be looking for the obvious that God puts before us. Now, when you look at verses 15 and and 16 to 17 and on through there, you'll notice something here, that the cloud was obvious. The cloud was obvious, okay? Um, there it is. And on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, uh, verse 16. So it was always the cloud covered it by day. That word always there in the original language means continuous. The cloud was always there. It was obvious. The cloud was, it, 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 it was obvious. Everyone could see the cloud from miles away. It could not be missed. Now, here's what I, I want you to see here. There was no way that the nation of Israel could miss the will of God as to when he wanted them to move or to stay put. The cloud was obvious. Now, let me give you some big theological revelation here. God wants me and you to know his will too, okay? God wants each and every one of us here to know his will. Matter of fact, I believe sometimes he wants us to know it more than we want to know it sometimes. He wants us to know his will. And if we want to know his will, we cannot miss it, I'll guarantee you. If we want to know his will, we cannot miss it. And here's, here's a statement I'm going to say to you. The only people who miss God's will are those who do not want it. You hear what I said? The only people who miss God's will 
are the people who don't want to know it. I look at this passage, and I love the simplicity of God's guidance. It was obvious. When, you, when you're really focused in and wanting to see and to know uh, what God wants you to do, it was obvious. And you look through these verses here, and you'll, you'll see it again. When the cloud moved, they moved. When the cloud stayed, they stayed. And I don't know about you, church, but listen, that's how I want to live my life. That's how all of God's people should want to live their lives. Yes, I'm sure there, that, that, that we, have to, we have to weigh facts. We have to examine situations and, 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 and consult uh, uh, friends and other people. But here's the bottom line. Is God moving or is God staying? That's it. I mean, it's as obvious as that. Is God moving or is God staying? Now, if God is on the move, why should I want to lag behind? Okay? You see what I'm saying? If God's on the move and He's telling me to move, why in the world would I want to lag behind? But if the, the glory cloud is staying put, then also I've got to say, well, it's a mistake for me to forge ahead right now on my own. You see? But what I want you to see is, if they truly sought to know God's will, God put the obvious in front of them. And they were able to see it's time to go or it's time to say, stay. Now, now, here's where that relates to us, friends. And this is where, let's just be honest, sometimes God gets us out of our comfort zone. And sometimes God uh, 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 nudges us to do things a little bit different sometimes. So that means to, for you and I today that, that I've got to be willing to, to pick up and, and, a, and to take off if, if God's moving. And it means I've got to be willing to hunker down and, and, and wait it out. If God says, wait it out. But here's, here's what I want you to see. Don't make it harder than it is. It's obvious that the way to follow God is just to follow God. That's obvious. So we've got to be committed in our personal lives and in our corporate lives as God's body. We've got to be committed to be looking for the obvious that God puts around us. And I, again, I, I'm, I'm relaying this to my own journey. And there's never been a time when I've truly sought to know the will of God that when I start looking for the obvious, God shows me. And I believe any, anybody else in here that's truly, truly think, wanting to follow God, you can look at those times and God says, it's time to move or it's time, it's, it's time to hunker down and just wait. Look for the obvious. That's the difference between truly following or just wandering around. There's a third truth I want you to see uh, from this. Now, again, you look back at verses 15 through 18. It's, first of all, it's a cloud. Then it says the cloud picks up and moves and the cloud stays for all. Pick up and move, pick up and move. That's what you see through verses 15 through 18. This is a cloud, folks, a cloud. Now, here's what I want you to see. Thirdly, the difference between truly wandering or, or, wandering or, or truly following is this. We've got to overcome our fear of the uniqueness of God's will and God's call on our lives. You hear what I said? We've got to overcome our fear of the uniqueness of of God's will. Listen, now think about this. Wouldn't you agree there's something unique about following a cloud, isn't there? Something different. That's unique. Can you imagine in that day the people say, well, we're following God. We're, we're following this cloud. Can you imagine how folks would laugh at them and, and make fun of them and and ridicule there's something unique about following God's will and you know what church sometimes that scares us because sometimes it gets us it, it moves us out of our comfort zone it stretches us or it causes us to be patient sometimes when we're impatient there's something unique about 
following God's will. And sometimes we must be committed to overcoming our fear of the uniqueness of God's will. There's something unique about following God's will. Now, I've thought about this, and I thought, you know, people follow a lot of things today, don't they? Investment counselors, uh, psychiatrists, horoscopes. But the idea of following the cloud is not too appealing, is it? That's not too appealing. As a matter of fact, today, people will make fun of you for following God's will. People will make fun of you for following God's will because as a matter of fact, following the will of God is something that people outside of Christ cannot understand and sometimes those of Christ don't understand it much either. But people will make fun of you for following the will of God. There's something unique about following the will of God on our lives <clears throat> to get to that specific purpose and place and time that he has for us. If you don't believe me, just look through the scriptures. Go back to Abraham and when God told him just to pick up and go to a place he never even knew he was going, there's something unique about following the will of God. Go back uh, to the Bible and, and, uh, or when you get to heaven, ask Noah, about how God calling him to build a big boat when nobody ever even seen any rain. There's something about, uh, unique about following the will of God. Shoot, if I had these Clear Creek students with me today, I'd say come up and ask some of these Clear Creek students about following the will of God. I've had students look at me with tears running down their eyes and say my family's abandoned me because they don't understand the call of God on my life. I've literally had students tell me that. That they're family. Brother Donnie, I, I sold my house. I quit my job. I, I moved here to the mountains of eastern Kentucky. And man, my family does not understand that. Hey, listen, church. There's something unique about following the will of God. And that scares us sometimes. See, he may be calling you to step out of your comfort zone. He may be calling you to just hunker down when you think, man, I've got to move forward. Or he may be calling you to move forward when I'm hunkered down. We've got to overcome our fear of the uniqueness of God's will. Man, God said, I'm going to give you a cloud and a pillar of fire. Man, you probably thought at the start they're shaking their heads. What do you mean, God? <laughs> it's, it was unique. So... We've got, to, we've got to overcome our fear of the uniqueness of God's will. And then lastly, you get to verse 19 and all the way down through 22. And here's, here's probably the, the foundational thing of this passage. Because fourthly, I'd say the difference between truly following or just wandering around is this. We've got to be committed to following God's will with diligence and patience with diligence and patience notice here you'll see and i won't take time to read that all the way down through 19 through 22 but notice that the israelites they followed the cloud explicitly okay with diligence when they moved the scripture says and right after that they moved but with patience the scripture says when it stayed there they said, now, this is just amazing to me. Look at what it says. If the cloud lingered for a day, it says they dwelt there for a day. But then if it rose in the middle of the night, they rose in the middle of the night, packed their goods, and left. But, oh, my goodness, if it remained for a year, they remained for a year. Now, think about what that's telling us here. It's saying that if God's will, if God's leadership lingered on there in circumstances that were less than desirable for them you know what it says they were patient and they remained because it was God's will for them to be there it was obvious God was saying stay here no matter how long the cloud stood still they didn't let their impatience with the status quo make them run ahead of God 
no matter how quickly or how often the cloud moved, they didn't get so settled into the status quo that they refused to move when God was moving. Now that may be some of our experiences right now, right here today, or possibly in the future. God will possibly lead us into situations maybe that would not necessarily be our choosing. Have you ever had those? Yeah. Maybe we wouldn't necessarily choose. Yours may not be the best possible circumstances right now. There, there may be hardships. There may be pressures. There may be distress. And maybe God's will right now is telling me to linger there because he's lingering there. Or his will may be to make a specific move because he says, come on, follow me. Come on, it's time, follow me. And the challenge I see from this passage is that when that comes, I must accept that. When that comes, we as God's people must accept that because it's all part of the process that God is working out in my life and in your life. Now, listen to me. It may not be what I choose. It may not be what you choose. But it's what God has chosen for us. And here's the way I have chosen to look at it. God takes the responsibility of guiding and gives me the privilege of trusting. God gives you the privilege of trusting his guidance. I want to challenge you today. Let's not any of us leave here today be, and be guilty of attempting to move ahead of God when God says to sit still or likewise when through his leadership we're moved to a particular direction. Let's not question that direction, but let's do the will of God, whatever that may be. Now, I know what some of you are saying probably right there. Now, Brother Donnie, this is back in Old Testament times. That's a cloud. Do you think God's going to put a cloud up over my house or something? Well, now, he could if he wanted to. Okay, I firmly believe that. But you know what? God doesn't have to use a physical cloud. Let me give you a couple notes of, of application. So, so, so how, does God, how does God turn this cloud into some personal application for me today? What's this cloud for me? What does God, how does God choose to, to lead us? Well, let me give you two or three things I think that are very important that you need to put with this passage to make it personal in the application of your life. What's that GPS system he gives us today? Well, I believe the most important thing for us as Christians is the Word of God. This is absolute truth. It's the it's the standard for our lives. So when I think about, well, what's God's GPS system for me today? Well, first of all, I'd say this. God gives us a timely verse. If we stay committed to him and we truly want to know his will, we want to know the obvious that he puts around us, first, I believe a timely a verse is something that God uses to keep us from just wandering around when it comes to his leadership. Now, here, I think I put these up. Yeah, here, you can write these down. I won't read them. Psalm 119, 105. What did the psalmist say? We learned it in Bible school. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know what that word lamp means or that word light means? It's the word in the original language for a candle. How much light does a candle give you? Enough to take one step forward, right? Isn't it amazing how God works? That GPS system, when we're committed to him, we're committed, we want to know the obvious, we, we're, we're not afraid of the uniqueness of God's will. God just show us, well, when we're committed to his word and we stay in his word, sometimes it's that timely verse. that says, God, okay, I need to move. Or God, I need to be patient. A timely verse. That's the cloud. Secondly, I believe God guides us through what I call defining circumstances. Man, you can't get away from this either. Man, I love it when God does this. Sometimes God just smacks us upside the face and says, this is what you need to do. It's obvious. But the story there is about uh, Paul on his missionary journey. Remember, he was ready to go to a certain part of the world, and God 
He, he, he had doors closed here and doors closed here. And what did God do? He gave him a vision about the man in Macedonia. He said, come over here. That's what I call defining circumstances. Man, I love it. God just sometimes, God will say, this is what you need to do. These are defining circumstances. You know beyond a shadow of a doubt. God works that way. And lastly, I believe God gives us what I call that, this, uh, this inner compulsion. Now, here's a neat story. Go home and read this in Acts chapter 20, and, and uh, the specific verse is 22, but that whole chapter is Paul is giving his farewell address to the uh, leaders at the church at Ephesus, and he's on his way to Jerusalem. And here's what he told the leaders in the church of Ephesus in Acts chapter 20. He said, listen, I know that I'm not going to see you all anymore because God's got me on the way to Jerusalem. This is what he said. He said, I know there's some bad things that are getting ready to happen to me when I get to Jerusalem. But he said, I have to do this because that's God's will for me. He said, I'll be out of the center of God's will if I don't do this. So I call that, it was that inner compulsion. Now, don't tell my English teacher I use this double negative, but he's, he's saying, I can't not do this. Sometimes God gives us that inner compulsion where we know if we're not doing that, there's no way we're in the center of God's will. A timely verse. Defining circumstances. Inner compulsion. There's your cloud system. There's your GPS system today. And if you're true, if you truly want to know God's will, you can't miss it. Because God's leadership is just as active through His Holy Spirit today as it was in a cloud when He led the children of Israel. So I want to say to you, God guides us in ways we won't miss if we're willing to be led. If we're willing to be led. What did the writer of Proverbs say? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. Listen, if we're willing to go wherever He leads, we won't find ourselves just wandering around. That's where it begins, okay? If we're willing, we cannot miss it. If we're willing to give ourselves to reading and studying God's Word, letting Him speak to us through situations, through His Word, we won't end up just wandering around in life. And maybe in those areas where His Word may not give us specific directions, we can know that the Spirit of God will lead us and help us to make those decisions. He'll give us that deep down sense of rightness of an action. And that peace that passes all understanding. That'll be the basis for what we do day in and day out. So this very day, God wants to show us the way with his pillar of cloud, our Holy Spirit. And I want to challenge you today, don't make it harder than it is the way to follow God is just to follow God that's the difference between truly wandering or truly following or just wandering around listen if you're here this morning if you're watching this morning you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior let me say to you a life that surrendered to Christ through salvation is the beginning for an awesome journey for you and you may not want to admit it this morning but I know if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior you're just wandering around today you, you may have a good job, you may have a lot of good stuff, but you know what, I know deep down you still got a hole in your heart. And you know what, that heart's closed up, first of all, by the beginning of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Maybe the call for you to quit existing today starts with the call of salvation. Would you trust Him as your Savior? You'd say, Brother Donnie, I've been doing this, I've done... Listen, it doesn't matter. God said He loved you enough to send His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for your sins. He rose from the dead that third day, and He lives today ready to offer you the free gift of salvation. Would you truly start living today instead of just wandering around? Trust Him as your Savior. Christian, let me say to you, you may have just gotten off track. All of us, that's easy to do. Devil, devil can't take our salvation from us, but He can rob us of our joy. And he can get us off track. He can get us being impatient when God says slow down. He can get us to be patient when God's saying come on. Have you gotten so busy with everything else that you've been, you just haven't been seeing the obvious that God's placing around you? 
listen, even as a Christian, we can look up one day and say, man, I'm just wandering around. I, I've lost my purpose. I've lost my contentment. Praise God, the Bible says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Would that be your call today as a believer? There's a difference between truly following or just wandering around. Make sure you're doing what God wants you to do. Father, we love you today. Thank you for this passage, God. You've just uh, shown me just some great things through this. Thank you for allowing me to preach it today. But God, we come to a most important part today as we proclaim your word. We, we love the ability to be able to give an invitation and for people to respond, God, to your leadership in their lives. And Father, I'm praying for somebody that has never trusted Christ as their Savior. They would say, Brother Donnie, you're right. I'm just existing. I'm just, I'm just wandering around in life today. Help them to know, God, that you love them enough to send your son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for their sins. And he rose from the dead that third day. And Lord, today he's living, ready to offer them the free gift of salvation. Lord, would somebody start living today through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Lord, help us as believers to look for your leadership in our lives. Help us to be truly following, to know that we're getting, we're going to that place, that purpose that you have for us in life. Help us, Lord, if we've gotten off track. Help us to get our eyes focused back on you so that we can leave here today saying, I'm truly following, not just wandering with my lives. We love you, Lord. Take this invitation guy, today, Lord. Let your Holy, I pray for your Holy Spirit to work and that we would respond in obedience. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother David, you lead in time. Let's all stand as we sing. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Tis so sweet.